Greetings to you my dear viewers and thank you for tuning in again so that we can reason together in the Word of God. Today we are continuing with John chapter 2 and I remember that last time we were together I asked you that if you are able and you should have been able you should read through the Gospel of John and as you read through the Gospel of John remember the intention or the purpose for which John was writing that gospel and he actually gives us the reason why he was writing this gospel and it is in chapter 20 verses 30 to 31 said so Jesus did many other miraculous signs that are not written in this book he did these miracles in the presence of his disciples and they are not written in this book of John but this what he wrote these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ or Yeshua is Hamashiach and that he is the Son of God and that by believing in him you can have eternal life. I have followed Jesus now for almost 32 years and I have found the word of God to be true, abundantly true and I have proven it at many levels that it is true and indeed as Jesus say in John chapter 6 verse 63 that the flesh profits for nothing you know most people live in this world for this flesh they work every day they are tired every day they wake up early every day go to bed late every day just working to nurture this flesh but the Word of God is life the word of God, he says, the words of God are spirit and they are life. As we look through the book of John, I reminded you at the beginning that there are some key words to pay attention to. One of which is life and eternal life. And then the verb believe. So Jesus is presented here as the savior of the world and the son of God. And that by believing in him, you will have eternal life in fact in john 1 verses 13 it says that we can become sons of god if we accept this message so we're going to continue today in john chapter 2 and john chapter 2 is divided into two sections i will read through the sections uh, each at a time and then we'll offer some commentary john chapter 2 uh, it's um, it's a wedding, yeah. And it's the first miracle as John perceives it that Jesus performed. So Jesus started his uh, his ministry in a wedding, and as we see the book of Revelation close up, we see the wedding feast of the Lamb. In that wedding feast that is coming, it is Jesus Himself who is going to be the bridegroom. So, marriage is that important to God. Of course, He created it. it. Was then, it's now, and it will be at the marriage feast of the Lamb. So, on the third day at the wedding, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. Oh, to the wedding! Wonderful. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. <laughs> Dear woman, why do you involve me? <laughs> Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone jars, water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he said, He told them, Now draw some out and take to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tested the water and that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom and asked, 
aside and ask. Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have been too much have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. I guess when Jesus is involved, everything that comes from him is the best. This, so this verse 11, this the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. Okay, so we're just going to highlight a few things here. Maybe I'll begin with this verse 11 here. What is the purpose of miracles? The purpose of miracles is to recognize Jesus, to recognize the power of God, and to have faith in God. If the intended purpose of miracles is not to draw attention to Jesus and faith in Him, those miraculous signs are self-serving. They don't serve the purposes of God. You see, when they saw this, it reveals His glory. Jesus' miracles reveals His glory. It is not revealing the glory of the man of God. It's not revealing the glory of the pastor. It's not revealing the glory of the priest. It's not revealing the glory of the prophet. It is revealing the glory of Jesus. Miracles through the Spirit are to reveal the glory of Jesus and to cause people to put their faith in him. So this was a wedding. This was wine. I'm not going to spend time here trying to tell you uh, the alcoholic content of the wine or how it is and so on. Or whether you should drink or not to drink. The fact here is that this was wine. The kind that can still drunken. So, drinking a glass of wine is not condemned in the Bible. In fact, wine is served throughout the Bible. It is drunkenness that is condemned. And you know how far you can go or someone can go to be drunk. And when you go that far, you are demonstrating that you don't know Jesus or you don't know the God of the Bible and what he expects of you. I don't drink wine. Not that if I'm served, I won't drink. It's not just part of my life. But I don't condemn it either. The Bible doesn't. But it is recommended for most people not to drink wine at all. That said about wine, the only thing that I want us to note here is how the interaction of Jesus with his mother, okay, Number one, his mother recognized his authority and spoke to him about the need of the situation. And Jesus Christ is like, um, Mom, why are you trying to involve me? I just came as a guest. Why are you trying to involve me? Well, his mother didn't stop there. He told the people that whatever he's going to tell you, just do it. So his mother had faith in him that he could change the situation. What a mother, right? His mother had the faith that he could change the situation. And Jesus actually changed the situation. And notice what Jesus said the first time that his mother spoke to him. He said, my time has not yet come. Jesus was working according to timing. And even in our ministry, things happen according to timing. And we should be in tune with God to know what He is doing in our life and in what places. We should not push things. But we should expect God to do things at His own time. Because God may be planning to do things in your life. Things that you want to happen now, but... He's planning them to happen at a specific time when those things will bring him glory. When instead, if they happen now and you want them to happen now, it's more for your glory rather than the glory of God. So here we see in this miracle the fact that Jesus 
Yes, he has the power as the creator to do whatever he can do that is necessary for him to do. He changed water into wine. It was a miracle. And as we see in verse 11, it revealed his glory as the Son of God, which is the purpose for which John was written these words. And then they put their faith in him. So just to say it again, miracles are not intended to be just things on their own. They're intended to reveal the glory of Christ, not the glory of me through whom those miracles have been performed. And they are intended to cause people to believe in Christ. We're going to see later in John 7 how in John 6, Jesus performed a miracle. He fed um, five, 6,000 people. And then the following day, people were flogging after him. And he looked at them and said, You are following me not because you saw the miracles, not because you want to believe. You are following me because you ate the loose and are filled. Most people today run after miracles because they want their satisfaction. They want some money in their bank account. They want some financial breakthrough. They want this, they want this, they want this. They are not fully because they are going after Jesus. They're literally like the people 2,000 years ago going after Jesus because their stomach can be filled. Please let that not be you. Now the second half of this chapter, we're looking at the start of Jesus clears the temple. And uh, this is a this is a serious one here, and I will introduce this this way. What had happened at this time was that the temple had become a business place. Has the church become a business place today? In my perception, what I see is that Jesus has become a product that everybody is trying to sell in order to acquire money, to acquire a name. And the Bible warned us about this in 2 Peter 2, that in the last days there will be many false teachers, false prophets who are going to make a merchandise. They're going to make business out of people. And these people are filled everywhere. They're filled everywhere. I want to communicate this word of God to you for free so that your faith may be in God so that your trust may be in God not on material things not asking you to give me a contribution the gospel Jesus said freely you have received freely you give yes it does cost to do these presentations but I would rather do them on my own for the sake of you that you may know the Word of God that you may believe the Word of God. this is the purpose for which I am teaching you this Bible that you may know Jesus and that you may have eternal life I will go without eating so that you can be saved I will go without eating so that you may know who Jesus is because that is life that is eternal life so as we see it here the temple had become a business place let me read it and then we will continue as well beginning from verse 12 john chapter 2 after this he went down to capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples they 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 stayed for a few days when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. <laughs> money. So he made a whip out of courts and drove all the temple 
and drove from the temple area both sheep and cattle, he scattered the coins of the money changes and overturned the tables. To those who sold those, he said, Get out of here! How dare you turn my father's house into a market? How dare you turn the church into a market? How dare you turn the church into a business? And ripping people of their resources and ripping people of their money. Church has become roadside robbery, stealing in the highways. Money, 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 money. Jesus has become a product. And you see the anger of the man of God here. He was furious. He made a whip and he beat the people seriously. I wish that we had a whip today and go into the churches and the ministries and whip the people because you have turned Jesus into a product. You are not giving people the words of life. You are giving them commercials to buy the products that you sell. You sell Jesus for a price. He said, get out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a business place. How you turn my father's house into a market. We have turned the church into a market. Business is booming in Jesus' name. It's the cheapest business. It's roadside robbery. He said his disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Are you sick in your heart seeing the way the name of Jesus is used today as a product to gain wealth? Is your heart sick? Do you truly love God and are you weeping because of these things that are going on today in the church? Prophet after prophet. Mega church pastor after mega church pastor exposed using the name of Christ for money. Give, 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 give. So, 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 so is it. So is it here. Do this, do this. Where is this from in the Bible? That's why I said to you that I want you to pick up the Bible and read for yourself so that you may know the Jesus of the Bible, not just the Jesus that someone comes teaching to you. And actually know also what is the church. Verse 18. Then the Jews demanded him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? <laughs> Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. Now, there's going to be a shift here, okay? He is at the temple, and he makes the statement, Destroy this temple, and I will build it up in three days. Very prophetic, profound truth that was going to change everything. Since then, up to the day and into eternity. Destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? Then we are given the explanation. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. I'll read to the end, then I'll come back to this. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. So this is like a parenthesis and an explanation about the temple and so on. But, 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 let, 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 okay, let me go 23 to 24 to 25 and then I'll come back. Sorry about that. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his.
his name once more again what is the purpose of miracles to show the glory of Christ and for people to believe in his name that's the purpose but Jesus would not entrust himself to them for he knew all men he did not need man's testimony about man for he knew what was in man so let's backtrack here a little bit and, sur and, su and summarize it this way verse 14 in the temple courts he found men selling cattle sheep doves and so on so yes in the temple there were sacrifices and there were people who traveled from distant places who would not bring along their animals so you could say well it was necessary that there should be some animals sold there so they can have an animal to sacrifice right but the reality is you can take a good thing and turn it into a bad thing listen carefully I am not saying that you should not give giving is an act of worship you are asked to give a certain proportion to the work of God and not only to the work of God but to give to those who don't have this is what most people don't emphasize let me tell you this you may be at a distance say, but I'm listening to you I want to give to you let me tell you what to do to get the greatest reward take one you want to give buy something food or clothes and find someone who is poor and destitute and give it to them find somebody your neighbor go into the villages if you have something to give because God has moved your heart that is one of the best ways to give not to set up a business with a pastor so being here the animals being here would have been a legitimate thing but it was turned into business yes like I'm saying giving is a legitimate thing to do but people can turn it into business men of God can turn it into a business which is what it's, it's, it's been done I have another book that I've written uh, it will be printed soon again about all this so-called prosperity preaching name it claim it so a sit here and you will receive this blessing and so on and so forth the Bible doesn't say that the things in the Bible that look like they say that that's what I'm saying that you have to be careful when the Bible says that he was so sparingly will rip sparingly and he was so bountifully will rip bountifully does it mean that you have to bring it to some person I've told you one of the best ways to give or oh, you want to give to me take what you have look for people around you who don't have and give to them in the name of God that will be wonderful and we see the outrage here of Jesus one of the places or maybe the only place that he actually expressed anger the church today needs a whip because it's all money institutions and I rest my case there so there was a shift here from the temple that was built with human hands to the temple that is the body we're gonna see that again in John 4 where John is speaking to the woman of Samaria and told her that a time is coming that you will not worship in that mountain or in this mountain but the father is seeking people who worship him in spirit and in truth Jesus became the temple those who believe in Jesus become the temple of God those who gather together in the name of Jesus become the temple of God it is not a building the house of God is not a building it is the people of God this one we have flung the test so bad 
Because when you ask for a church, somebody points to a building. Somebody points to a cathedral. But a shift had occurred here. From the building to the body as the home of God. And we're going to see more of that as we go to John 14 and 16 and 15 and 16 when he talks about us uh, the Holy Spirit coming to be with us and in us the Spirit who is God so we become the temple of God and lastly here verse 24 he said but so the people saw the great things he was doing and they were like oh maybe this is the king of Israel and, and they wanted him you know they, 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 they wanted him to 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 be the king but to said, but Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. Uh, it's got to be one of the most difficult uh, statements for me in the Bible. God knows you. God knows all men, and he knows the wickedness of your heart. Like Jeremiah 17, 9 will say, See, the heart of man is wicked above all things that no one can understand except God, who searches their heart. Is that your heart? Will Jesus actually look at you and say, eh, I know how wicked you are. It's not that you cannot repent. Back there in chapter 1, it, talks, uh, it talked about um, Nathaniel that, um, say verse 47, say, when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, here is a, a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Yes, you choose to have a good heart. Would you choose today? That the spirit will transform you so that you can actually have a, 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 a good heart so that you can be like job where god will challenge people and say have you seen my daughter mary she fears me turns away from evil and loves truth thank you again for listening this was john chapter 2 we're just making a run through and i urge you to read and read again and we can walk together and as you read, don't forget, Jesus is the Son of God. The reason this book was written was so that you may know that He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who saves, the one in whom you believe you will have eternal life. Don't miss that. Thank you and goodbye.